message you're about to listen to is by Apostle Gabriel Clement of Christ the Omega Vision Network. May you be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, there was something that I planned talking about today. The devil foresaw the power of that stuff. And all of a sudden, I've been searching for where I wrote it down. But one thing the devil did not know is that we are the living epistles. It is written upon our spirit. One thing the devil did not know that it is not a physical thing. I don't study to teach. I've stopped that a long time. I study to grow. I'm a channel of expression. So what he did not know is that it's from the spirit. It's not from the physical. So I stand here and I rewind and I go back in time. And I foresaw everything again. And I teach from that auction. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I will start from the most popular scriptural text you've ever known. John chapter 3, verse 16. By revelation, I can tell you, you don't know it. <laughs> the Bible says, For God so loved the world, the world. For God so loved what? The world. You see, Scriptures are revelation encoded. If the Lord did not open your eyes to see what is written, you, there is limitations. If the Lord did not open your eyes to see what is written in the scripture, there is an extent you cannot go. Hallelujah. He celebrates my pastor. Come and sit down as a pastor. Thank you. Please clap for him as he's coming. The latest couple. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I said, if the Lord did not open your eyes to understand the scripture, there are a lot of things you will be battling with without solution. Scriptures are revelation encoded and it takes revelation to unseal it. Are we together? So God must help us to understand his word. He said the word that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and they are what? Life. I said I will start explaining John chapter 3 verse 16 and you will be surprised that you don't even know what is written there. Are you ready? Say, Lord, we are ready. Amen. The Bible said in Proverbs, let's open our Bible quickly to Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 2. I want to show you something. He said, it is the glory of God to what? But it is the honor of who? To what? To search out a matter. That means it is part of God's glory that he often conceals truth. He conceals truth because he is actually looking for people that will come inside and search it out. So the hidden things of God are not hidden because God wanted it to be hidden. They are hidden because no man has been able to move closer to see into it. So by the time you see into it, it no longer becomes hidden, but it is still hidden to the man that have not gained stature or has not attempted moving closer enough to be able to see what is there. God is in dimensions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this scripture is telling us that what? It is the glory of God to conceal him, but it is the honor of what? Kings. Who are kings? Wait. Let's check it from the scripture. Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want us to journey by light. Oh, Jesus, we bless your name. We say thank you. Huh. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful what? Witness. And the first begotten of what? The dead. And the prince of the kings of what? The prince of the kings of what? Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood. And has made us what? So who are kings? Who? No, you are wrong. There was only one name there. It's called Gabriel. So the Bible is telling us that here that what? It is the glory of what? God to keep things. But it is what? An honor to who? Gabriel. To what? To search it out. That means God is saying that what? His truth. Him himself. You can come up in that. You can come and understand him. You can search out his secret things. You can know it. Say, I can know it. So when you are in an atmosphere where the word of God is tough and the power of God is visible like this, you begin to journey by light. As I'm talking to you, I'm not speaking on my own. I'm speaking of him that have called me Jesus Christ. So as I'm talking, you are journeying. Some of you can be seated there, but if the Lord open your understanding, you will see that as I'm teaching, you are running at the speed of light. So your spirit is journeying into the Father. So I repeat, Christianity is not a journey into heaven. It is a journey into God. There was a time whereby the highest revelations of Jesus that they have was making heaven. But in our generation... Paul said we are what? Citizen of Christ. Meaning you are already a citizen of heaven. You are citizen of heaven already. So we are not journeying to heaven. We are journeying to what? God. Because we believers, we don't die. We only switch and continue to live. So our journey is into who? God. Say God. So I started by quoting the scripture. Say for God so love what? The world. For God so loved what? The world. Now, who is God? Who is God? You see, God is the more you open my understanding, know him more. I keep on realizing that I still don't know him. God is you see in the Hebrew language there is one thing they understand about God they so much recognize God like there is this reverence they have for God that is so strong that uh, there are seven names of God that according to the Hebrew text when they write that name you don't clean it they are subordinate formation, but there are several major names of God that they believe. When you write it, you don't clean it. Anytime they write that name, they reverence it. There are seven in number. The first one is Yahweh. It's from the word you do verb. It's Y H, I think W H. Are you with me? The second one is what? Adonai. Third one, Elohim. The fourth one, El Yah. Some of you are surprised. Eya, E Y A H, Eya. Then there is El, E L. I am that I am. There is Sabot. These are names that are reverence. And these names, one is Shaddai. From the word El Shaddai, but it's Shaddai. All those names reveal something about the personality of God. They reveal the magnitude of God. There were men in the scriptures that have contended by light and have journeyed to a place that, in fact, their names, the name of God, 
attached to their names. For example, El Elohim. We used to sing El Israel. Elohim Israel. The name Israel was given to who? Jacob. Hallelujah. So today I said I'll be sharing some things that we will need to understand very well. In the scripture, let's open our Bible to Psalm 8 quickly. We are still coming to John chapter 3 verse 16. You will understand that place better. Psalm 8. Are you there? This psalm was revealed in the New Testament too. So, okay, sorry, hold on. Before we go to Psalm 8, let's go to Psalm 24. So I said, who is God? Psalm 24, quickly. He said, the earth is what? The Lord. And the what? Fullness thereof. The world and they that what? Dwell therein. This place is telling us that the earth belongs to who? The Lord. The world and they that dwell what? Therein. So who owns the earth? The devil? The devil? I want to open my eyes to something. Who owns the earth? The devil? The president? You see, there are revelations that if you don't understand, things will not work for you in that aspect. I began to ask myself, what did the fathers, the likes of Benson Dauza, came in contact with that they can speak to nations and nations will respond? This is the secret. They were aware that the earth is what? Of the Lord. There are believers today. Some of you, you will enter a territory and they will tell you there is one strong herbalist there. Immediately you hear that, you are shaking. It shows you don't know who owns the earth. Hallelujah. It means you don't know who owns what? The earth. Because if you are aware that the earth is of the Lord, when you step into that territory, it does not matter who calls himself boss. What matters most is who you know that thing or who the boss you know. Repeat after me, the earth is of the Lord. Repeat after me, the earth is of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we bow our head and say, Lord, I know the earth is you. I recognize you as the owner. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, let's continue. So the Bible said the earth belongs to what? The Lord. Acts chapter 17, verse 24, quickly. Acts chapter 17, verse 24. Look at the apostles, the believers, the church said something very powerful here too. I want to show you. I want you to know that the believers were also, they also knew about this. Hallelujah. Can we say thank you, Jesus? All right, let's, let's open our Bible. Acts chapter 17, verse 24. Are you there? He said, everybody read, want to go? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying here that God that made what? The world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of the what? Heaven and the earth dwelleth not in temples made with what? Hallelujah. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Sorry for the little... So, who made the heaven and the earth here? That means the church... That means the apostles were aware that the person that made the heaven is who? Everybody. Is who? Is who? Echo it. Is who? That means they were aware. Somebody made who? And the psalmist said, the earth is of the Lord and the what? Fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell what? Therein. Let's check scriptures again. Let's open to Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. Are you there? Are you there? If you are there, you can read. I need somebody to read. Can you come and 
the heavens and the heavens of what? The heavens and the heavens of heaven. Does what? Is the Lord thy what? God. Stop. Look at me. That means these people were aware that the heavens of the heavens belongs to who? God. Ask somebody. Who owns the earth? Who owns the earth? Who? Who? Now, you see, some of you here, by vessel of this revelation, you go home and go and meet your landlord and said, this house belongs to who? As I said that, somebody said, Wolves? Quick notice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Wolves? <laughs> Can we say thank you, Jesus? Someone said, Wolves? Amen. What does that tell you? The earth actually belongs to who? The Lord. That means, you see, this, what is contained in these scriptures will work for you under one condition if you have the revelation of it. If you know what this place is talking about. If you believe it. Say, I believe it. Say, I believe it. Say, I believe what is written here. So, the Bible is telling us that the earth belongs to who? You see, I'm re-emphasizing on it so that it will sink down within you. So, listen to me very well. So, anywhere you find yourself, the first thing you need to do is what? Claim that place and say, this place belongs to who? The Lord. Now, you see, you need to understand that there are two spirits that have lain ownership or claim on some territories. Are you with me? There are individuals that have laid claim on territories. A good example was, I remember I was invited to minister in a boring state. And when I got to that state, when it was time to minister, I've shared it several times, all of a sudden something began to happen. Rain began to fall. Around the time they gave me microphone, and this was an open crusade, and there was no provision for a place where people can stay. There was no provision for shelter or for something like a canopy. So it was an open feed. The, immediately we got there, immediately I took the microphone. Rain started falling. So as the rain started falling, you know, there is, so they had to cover the whole you know, instrument. So the man said, the, the person that, that invited me was son. That means they would have to off the whole sound system because there was no even, they didn't, they didn't know that the rain was going to fall. So they are going to off everything and that will be the end of the service. So if I noticed that, I told him, wait. I said, give me just two minutes. Now, I said that boldly. I said, if rain, give me, if this rain did not stop, everybody can go back to their home. Please don't try that too. Don't try that because they will not give you an honorarium. <laughs> They will not give you. Hallelujah. Now, something happened. Immediately, I noticed that. The next thing I did was what? I closed my eyes. I began to pray in the spirit. Now, as I was praying in the spirit, listen, the Lord opened my eyes. I saw some specific people standing in the territory in that area. They were putting on, I saw like black and I saw red. And those people stood and joined their hands together. What they are trying to say, it was later I now got to understand that in that particular territory, before you can do anything, even if a pastor wants to do crusade, as long as it's an open crusade, you have to visit them and give them something. You have to give them something or else your crusade will not hold. It's a norm there. So you have to take permission. That means some people lay claim on what is not theirs. They believe the territory belongs to them. And you see, you need to understand something. That the fact that they believe the territory belongs to them, nobody can change it except somebody that is aware. Except someone that has revelation. Except someone that has light. Except someone that has understanding. So if you don't understand, you can't do anything. So I told the guy, wait. And from here, I collected it. Immediately, I collected the key from them. Physically, the weather changed immediately. The weather changed immediately. Everything ceased. Are you following me? The weather switched immediately. And the next thing we begin to we experience, the rain just stopped. Hallelujah. The weather ceased immediately. I'm telling you what happened. The weather sees immediately. Why? I collected what? 
the key. I will show you. How did I collect it? Why was I able to do that? Open your Bible to Psalm. I just want to show you in the scripture, Psalm 115. How to collect the key is by revelation. Psalm 115, verse 16. Are you there? Everybody, are you ready? If you don't have a Bible, look here. What does it say? Even what? Our what? But the earth has it given what? To who? Now, he said children of what? Men. Note, he did not say to believers. He didn't say to Christians. It means the most powerful lay claim on the earth. Did you understand? The Bible did not say Christians here. He said to the children of what? Men. That means anybody that have understanding of a higher force, that have a superior power or capacity, takes the earth. So that means that Abel is understood that he has the backup of a force or forces that makes him superior. So because of that, he believes he is stronger than everybody. So he believes that territory belongs to what? Him. So the day you rise up with an understanding, because the Bible described, he said what? The light shineth and the darkness cannot what? Comprehend. So the day you have an understanding that what? You are a light and darkness cannot what? Comprehend you. Cannot submerge you. And you begin to take authority. What happens automatically? You what? You what? You take over. This is what the likes of Ben Sidaosa. Now you need to understand when the Bible is talking about the earth. It's talking about everything in the earth. The clouds is the part. The firmament. Are you with me? The call, we call them the first heaven because it's the heaven of the earth. Are you with me? So you can take over. So those men believed it. Say, I believe the word of God. You see, the problem most times is that many of us don't believe the word. And if you don't believe it, it cannot work for you. So those men are aware that this thing belongs to me. Now, that means, listen, I'm saying this, that means you can enter a room. Those of you that are going to take apartment, maybe you now took an apartment, they said they buried something in the land. Listen, that means somebody has taken over that land. You can take it from that person. By what? By what? Echo it. By what? Revelation. Say revelation. That means you can get there and say, this territory is mine. And as you begin to speak in tongues, you legislate over this. Now, you need to understand something. There is nothing Satan created. I repeat, Satan never created anything. I repeat, there is nothing. Think about it. Satan never created. In fact, Satan did not create gifts. Some of those top musicians you see Illuminati, their gift was not created by Satan. Did you hear what I've just said? It was not created by who? All he did was what? To what? What he does. Listen, this is what Satan do. He fast track things. Did you hear me? Now, for example, let's pick an Illuminati agent that has the gift of singing. That person is still going to become a musician. Because the gift is naturally imputed there by who? God. So all Satan needs to do is to promise the person and tell the... That's why he's called a deceiver. He will tell them, I can give you this thing. How? I can make it. He will tell you, I'm giving you. Whereas he's not giving you. He's only what? He can comprehend time. And that thing works in his own domain. Are you with me? Because he's called the prince of what? So because he's referred to as the prince of what? The word. Not the prince of the earth. Not the prince of what? There's difference between the world and the what? The earth. The world is talking about the system that coordinates the earth. It's like a system of government. It's like a syllabus. It's different from what? The earth. The earth belongs to who? Now, Satan is called the prince of the system of this world. So because of that, now remember I said what? This world. And remember Jesus said you are not of what? You are not of what? Say, I'm not of this world. So what does that mean? That simply means that what? Somebody is in charge of this world. So in this world, he can amplify people under his... He's not the one that imputed the gift. So 
if you are here, you've been having this mindset that Satan, ah, Satan made it. No, he did not put it there. What he did was what? Deception. He amplified. Remember the same thing he did to Jesus. He said, bow down before me and I will give you what? The whole world. He showed him as if he owned it. He was not the owner. He was not the legal owner. Are you with me? Say, the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof the word and they that dwell therein. You can start now. Can we shout glory? glory. Can we shout glory? glory? Hallelujah. Say thank you Jesus. Now I've established the first fact that the earth belongs to who? Be belongs to who? Hallelujah. Now there's something I want to also bring to you. This God now I showed you from the scriptures that he gave the earth to who? men. Now, this God that gave men the earth, there's something I want to point out about this God. The Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, for God so what? Close your eyes. Meditate on it. For God so loved me. Say it to yourself. You are the glorious God. Alagbara. Say to yourself, You are the mighty one. In Lato Biju, you are the glorious God. For God so loved me. Say it to yourself until that thing sinks. You are the mighty one. In Lato Biju. You are the glorious God. You are the mighty God. You are the glorious God. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore you, Baba. Angels bow before you. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus, you are great. Thank you, Jesus. I am, I am yours forevermore. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours forevermore. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. Baba, I am yours, Jesus. I am yours forevermore. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. So everybody, look up. He said, "For God so loved what? For God so loved what? For God so loved what? Calm down." This time, before you put yourself, for God so love what? For God so love what? Read it. The word. The Bible is telling us here that God loves what? The word. Follow me. God loves what? The word. He didn't mention a believer. Calm down. That means the first love that God had was not for the man that is born again. There are two kinds of love that comes from God to his children. This first one <laughs> is for who? The word. Psalm chapter 8. Jesus. I am yours. I am yours. Hey. I am yours. Forevermore, 
I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Rise up on your feet and say, Lord, I am yours. Say, Lord, I'm for you. Say, Lord, I'm for you. Sit down quickly. Let's go. Oh, Lord, our God. He said, how excellent is what? Everybody. Thy name. In what? Who has said thy glory above what? Above what? There is a reason why the Bible said he set his glory above the heavens. Let's continue. We are still coming back. Verse 2. He said, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, hast thou ordained strength because of thy enemy, that thou mightest steal what? The enemy and the avenger. He said, out of the mouth of babes and what? Suckling. What does that mean? God is saying, my revelation, if I put it in the mouth of mighty people, people will say that what? It is coming from their mouth because they are mighty. So God will hide his truth and we bring it to where you don't imagine. So some of you are seated here. This truth that you are, he you are hearing, you will think God will come and give you in your church, but he will come and hide it in form of omega. Look at the kind of body of light that is flowing here. It's the wisdom of God. Out of the mouth of what? Babes and suckling. Has thou ordained what? Strength. God knows that if he release that thing through us, the glory will be what? His. He knows that we cannot because, listen to me very well. Look at me. Look at my age. Look at the way I'm speaking. By the virtue of my age, I'm not supposed to be communicating these things. So, my life is a revelation of the wisdom of God in form of what? A person. So, God can do a miracle. You, some of you heard about the miracles that have been happening in the course of the week. On the last Wednesday meeting, you saw the miracles happening in Saturday. How somebody was healed of. That is the wisdom of God. These things, there are many elderly men of God that God did not reveal it to them. And he did it through a young boy. Why? So that the glory might be what? His. So I will be unwise to stand and say that I did this. No. Christ did it. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life that I live, I live it through what? Christ. And listen to me, as God's child, the more you begin to die, the more you begin to, you begin to allow him to find expression, you will see much more of his glory. So follow me. Verse 3. Follow. He said, when I consider what? Thy heavens. Who? Thy what? Who is the owner of the heavens? 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 Of the heavens? That means, you see, those of you that attended Deliverance Church, they will tell you that there are power in the heavenly places that controls the affairs of men. But the Bible is said, when I consider thy what? Heavens. Listen to me very well. You can be staying in the house. At least majority of us here are renting apartment, including me. And listen, I can say because I paid for the rent, this house belongs to me. Right? But legally, officially, is it mine? It belongs to somebody. So the same way the devil and his cohort might be hanging there. But we know by revelation that what? They are only what? They are staying because nobody is chasing them off it. Because believers have not come to that place whereby they can stay in those sphere of influence. So they are managing it. They are waiting for me, you and me, to come into the understanding of who we are as sons. Are you with me? So the heavens belong to who? Now, no, the Bible did not say heaven. It said heavens. That means it's talking about realms. That means realms and dimension belong to who? He said the work of thy fingers, the moon, it's now coming down. The stars, which thou hast what? Ordained. Verse 4. Quickly. Oh, Jesus. I am. First. Yes. He said, everybody read. Want to go? What is what? That thou art what? And the son of what? That thou what? Now, the Greek translation of this man means humanity. So it says, what is humanity that you are mindful of? Listen. That means... God's first love goes to what? Humanity. God loves what? Everybody. Whether born again or not what? Born again. This is not talking about believers here. Are you with me? And the love that God had for them. You see, there was a love that God had for them in the beginning. When it was corrupted and every man failed, God longed for man to be saved. Are you with me? 
The Bible says, we want all men, what? To be what? Saved and to come to the knowledge of what? Truth. There are two kinds of love there. The first one is the one that is attached to what? Salvation. The second one is connected to the knowledge of what? The truth. It's two. So the first one, say, God loved me. God loves me. So God loved what? Everybody. So he said, what is man? That thou art mindful of and the son of man, that thou visited him. The man here is what? The human race. So God is visiting human. He visited the human race. He kept on visiting them because he what? Loved them. He what? Loved them. He what? Everybody loved them. This is the first love. And that love is for everybody. That is why you see some of you here, your parents are not born again, but God kept on showing you mercy and is protecting them. Love. The earth is the way it is. There is an, a level of orderliness in the earth today because of what? Love. See, listen, the reason why the earth is going upside down and things are getting spoiled is not because of God. It's because of what? Man. I read by the scriptures, the Bible makes us to understand that every territory has angels. There are angels in charge of each territory to protect them. But listen, the angel is as powerful as the what? The awareness of the men. That means the condition of Nigeria is the way it is. Because of what? God? God? Who? Man. Because a man is what? Is an authority. The Bible says when the righteous rule it, the people enjoy. I'm paraphrasing. But when the wicked rulers, the people what? Suffer. So, your head is the determinant of many things that happen within the system. Are you getting what I'm saying? And yet, God still loves what? He loves what? Us. So, God loves every man. Keep that at the back of your mind. That God loved everybody. That love was the reason why he gave his son. The Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, not when you became born again. So God loved you falsely in any condition you are. It's called an unconditional love. So that means your purpose of creation. You see, the problem is that some of you are trying to impress God. Listen, there are many believers today, they say, I have not prayed enough, so God cannot love me. You feel praying enough with what? Impress God. You were not designed to impress him. He has angels for that. You were designed for relationship. So how you impress love, God, is by what? Intimacy. The Bible says God will step out of heaven and will come down and fellowship with men. That means intimacy was the purpose of what? Creating you. Why he created you was because of fellowship. Was because of intimacy. So if you want to impress God, do you know how to impress God? Love him more. God is impressed by lovers. He's impressed by those that love him. Those that are not ashamed of him. Yesterday before I came to the meeting, I was singing and dancing. I was jumping about. People came and joined me. We danced and Ronke was with us. We were all dancing together. Why? We have seen him. When you understand the heart of the father, you become the center target. Listen. But the first thing I want to conclude in your mind that God loves everybody. That means... That wicked man, God loves him. Everybody around you, imagine them. God loves them. Are you with me? Your president, God loves him. Think about it. That teacher that failed you, God loves him. <laughs> you couldn't, you're lying. I will not mention him. God loves what? Him. So God loves what? Every man. But you see, that love that God has for every man was not his initial plan. It was not the kind of love he really wanted for his children. That love is a general love. There is another kind of love. The Bible says, for God, so we have quoted that place, say, for God so loved what? The word that he gave his only son so that he will bring them into his real love. So Jesus died. See, salvation is not the total end of God's plan. There is more. He didn't just die to save you. His son was given. It's like I gave you money to go and buy something. If you have not gotten that thing for me, have you fulfilled my desire? No! 
So that means it did not end in what? It did not end in what? In what? Salvation. So every time some people will quote this name, for God so loved me. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Sometimes some of us are singing those songs with the mindset of ah. Some people will say, No, God did not make you a neon. I will show you what he made you. Because he saved a neon. He saved you from the dimension of man. He saved you from the love of being man. There is something he wants. That thing was the reason why he died. There is a higher love. There is a higher love. I'm going to show you how these scriptures was mentioned again in the Bible. Hebrew chapter 2, quickly. Hebrew chapter 2. Verse 9. Are you there? Everybody read, want to go. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than what? For the what? Suffering of what? The death. Remember, in Psalm, the same statement was made. Okay. We are coming to this place. Let's go to Psalm back. Psalm 8. Let's go to verse 5. I want to show you the boundary of that love. Kai, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God be for me. Are you ready? Psalm 8, verse 5. Amen. Everybody read. Want to go? Everybody read it. And as crown it with what? Glory and honor. This is talking about what? The human race. Are you getting it? Hey, somebody is here to catch it. That means when the Bible said you have made him a little lower than the angel, he's talking to who? He's talking to what? Humans. He's not talking to his sons. They did not catch it. Did you catch it? I will repeat myself. When the Bible said you were made a little lower than the angels, the word there is mean you were made a little lower than what? El Elohim, El Elohim. So the person that is made a little lower than El Elohim, El, that God is who? Men, ordinary men. That means angels naturally were meant to listen to ordinary men. That is why our grandmother, they did not have that faith. They did not even know Christianity, but those ones that understood what they are. Have you heard about elders? They did not have charm. They will gather together and speak and it will come to pass. Why? They knew. You will think they have power. I'm from a place where they believe in elders. My great, great, I don't know if it's great, great grandfather or great grandfather, will, but one, at least one of them was the chief of the whole place I'm coming from. And that man they don't have charms. In fact, when he died, he was killed. It was a witchcraft. Somebody poisoned him. But those people, when they have meeting, when they want to confiscate somebody, if somebody steals something in my village, they will just gather. They call themselves elders. They are not more than four. They will gather together. They will first announce. If the person did not confess, they will announce and they will say, we the elders gather together and since this person has refused to open up, we, we release the person from our midst and few days time you hear the person died. Why? No, this is not a spiritual power now. This is not the power of sons. This is the power of what? Men! They didn't catch it. If you catch it, there is a power connected to you as a man. That is why you see some old men who say, Siba, shake me for they don't have power, but they, they, they but when they curse, it comes to pass because that power is connected to who? Yeah. There is a power connected to men. That is why you see those people know it's not some old women will say you, they will hit their belly and speak, and it will come to pass. It's called inherit. Some of those things were coded in hereditary. There are some old men. Have you not heard about man of God that said there are some places they don't die young. They will pray for you and they know a man of God called them the king maker anointing. He's connected to who? Men! These people are not born again. So the Bible said the man that is a little lower than him is what? An ordinary man. But the man that is aware. So this is what Satan saw. So when Satan saw that, ah! These people are called to be great. He will now go and visit them. Especially those ones that were specially appointed by heaven. 
He will go and meet them. He will appear to them at a tender age and invite them. That is how some of those habits were made. When they were young, they will tell you the God chose them. Why did he choose them? You will think it is Satan that gave them the power. No, Satan went after them because he saw that there is a power conferred upon that hereditary. I know what I'm saying. Naturally, I'm from the lineage of those that reset bones. Naturally. My mommy, if your bone break, they used to bring it. It's our family thing. They will help you. They will just hold your bone like this. They will cut. I know the wood. They will cut the wood and they will speak to the wood. And they will tie it on your day. They will tell you, wait, in the next two weeks you will stand up and your bone will be reset. Look at it. So, they were, they were made to believe that that power belongs to who? The devil. No, it is something that is in the system of what? Man. Those things were divided over time because men was no longer getting it. And because men was no longer getting it, those things begin to form in some lineage. Are you getting me? It begin to enter into some family. So in some family, they always get blessed. In some family, so, so, so always happen. In some family, so, so, so always happen. They always, is a perfect family. Their children always make sense. It begin to form. It's like when something... Nobody is speaking it. Over time, it what? Clumps together. That's what you are seeing. Say the power in men. It's not power of the sons of God. <laughs> hey. So the Bible now told us. Now let's quickly jump to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. We'll soon be rounding off. Follow me closely. Are you learning the word of God? Listen. Hmm. Kai. If a song is coming to your spirit, release it. Don't worry. Everybody. Ah, ah, yeah, ah, Hebrew chapter 2, verse 9. Ah, ah, La 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 everybody everybody really want to go say but we see who we was made what for the sovereign of what crown with what and by the grace of God should taste death for what that means when Jesus came he came to bring us up either he said, the dimension of men is too small. I have a greater plan. God said, I have a greater plan. I don't want you to operate like men. There is a higher place for you. So the Bible said, Jesus came. And he what? He said, he was made a little what? Lower than what? The angel. That means Jesus entered into your shoe as a man. He entered into your space as a man. It's like somebody telling you, this rank is too small. Take my rank. Let me take your rank. So when Jesus entered into what? The rank, he said, crown with what? Glory and honor. That he might by God's day taste death for what? Every what? Man. So the Bible now says, if any man be in, a, in Christ, that man is a what? Oh, is a what? I, I don't like your response. That man is, what, is a what? That means you are a new kind of being. So if God loved the world, what will God do to you? That means you are not operating in the love of the word. When the Bible says, for God so loved the word, it's not for you. You are not in that level. When you accepted Jesus into your life, you step out of that territory. You enter into God dimension. So it's like the Bible said, the Holy Spirit, the way it used to come down to fellowship with man. So God has made you another higher kind of being. Are you ready? John chapter 3. La 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 Verse 6 John 3 6 La 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 Hallelujah Everybody read want to go Is what that means you are not men. Say, I'm not a man. Say, I'm a spirit. 
So, spirit want to have fellowship with what? Spirit. That is why the Bible said what? Flesh and blood cannot see him. It's not for flesh. God is not in the flesh. It takes being a spirit to sin to God. Say we are spirit. Hebrew chapter 2 quickly. Let's go to verse 10. I want to show you some deeper things. And we'll round up. La la la. 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 Yes. Shaka baba la boshka. Everybody read. For it became him who all things by whom all things in bringing many sons unto what? Unto what? To make the captain of their salvation perfect through what? That means Jesus made you sons. And not just any kind of sons. You have been brought into the glory of God. So as a child of God, you are meant to live where Christ used to live. Who was Christ? He said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was what? In God. So that means Christ was in the mind of God. It was the mind of God that find expression on earth. So if Christ has given you that place, so where are you? You are in the very mind of God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Colossians chapter 3. Everybody read, want to go? Your life is it where? Say, I'm in God. That means when the Bible says the earth is of the Lord, where are you? Where are you? If you are in God, so the earth belongs to who? The earth belongs to who? The earth belongs to who? So if the earth belongs to you. You see, if you don't speak with this revelation, those spirits will not leave those territories for you. They know the person that understands this. So listen to me very well. If you notice witches used to operate in your area, wake up in the night. Shadamalagada buzada. It belongs to who? It belongs to who? Are you with me? You see, why this thing is not really visible in our life is because, let me tell you the truth. Are you ready? Why the power of God is not visible in our life is because we eat too much. Many of you can eat. So because of the content of the food and the flesh, it's like you are empowering the man Jesus crucified. This is life for somebody. Some of you have overempowered the man Jesus crucified. That thing he exchanged you from, that garment, you are wearing it. That is why you are powerless. You are feeding your flesh. You are making your flesh powerful instead of making your real identity, spirit powerful. So how do you make your spirit powerful? Condition your atmosphere. Listen to me very well. Many of you, God does not visit you. Angel, look at people was sharing. I was meditating in the room. She busted into the room and saw an angel. She screamed. Why was and I was there when she she was done. She came back. She first went out. She came back. I said, "Do you know I saw angels?" I said, "Of course, you should. It's a normal thing." <laughs> It means I was aware that they were standing there even when I was meditating. Why? Listen to me very well. If you want God to fellowship in your realm, condition your atmosphere. So how do you condition your atmosphere? The same way you own AC and everywhere become cool. You can set an atmosphere that God will always be around you. Angels will always be around you. How? Put sound around you. Spiritual sound. Put it around you. Even when you are sleeping, let sound be growing. Put Bible around you. Write scriptures everywhere. When you wake up, you are seeing Bible. Did you catch it? Some of you that used to have naughty dreams, it's because you don't con your atmosphere is not conditioned. 
Ah, I had dreamed that they were sleeping with me. Check your atmosphere. There's no air condition of the spirit. Condition it. Put messages. If you put my message, you have an encounter. I will visit you. The Lord through me will visit you. If you listen to Abu you will begin to see him in a vision. Some of you begin to hear his voice in the dream. Why? Your atmosphere is conditioned. Condition your atmosphere. 24 hours, reggae babandos, evil heart, evil gadashka. You are praying in tongues always. Even when you are in the kitchen cooking, it's now a normal thing. Reggae babando, vilihaza, balagans, You are cooking as you are missing the anointing. <laughs> hey! Stand up and shout glory! <laughs> Hallelujah! Are we getting blessed? Are we getting blessed? Ah, you can condition your atmosphere. Intentionally, that's what I do. I condition my atmosphere intentionally. So the presence of God is around me 24 hours. Anytime I speak, you see the presence of God. There was a lady I spoke to. I don't know if she's here yesterday. As I was talking to her, the power of God came upon us. She was crying and the Lord was touching her. And at the end of the conversation, it was an awesome experience. She was weeping because the Lord touched her. Why? The atmosphere is conditioned. So it's not as if the present comes and go. No. The Bible says it shall be in you, with you. How long? Forever. Condition your atmosphere. Some of us, the addition we are struggling with, if only you can condition your atmosphere, you will see that those things will not come again. I told myself, I'm very careful. Let me say this for some of you. It's for your own good. There are some of you that watch every videos on Facebook. Those Facebook videos. Some of you need to mute all those videos. Because all those videos, you will see they are conditioning lost into you. 24 hours, when you open, they will show Nash. If they don't show Nash, they will show something. They are trying to seduce your system. They are reconfiguring your atmosphere. See, what you are going through is not because God hates you. In fact, God is not... If God is telling you condition, he's doing that for your own good. It's not because he hated you. No! Some people say, ah, let me try. So that we... No, God did not want you to impress him. Don't try to impress him. Fellowship with him. Condition it. I don't watch them because by the time you open, five of them, which they will start those videos with sin of intercourse. They know what is the devil conditioning lost into you. Avoid it! Condition your atmosphere. Condition your atmosphere. Every second, Lebranon Zivalahadefanaya. Make it before you know. That is what the Bible means. Walking in the spirit. You will begin to walk and live there. I can be talking with somebody, an angel. Some of you have noticed it. I was speaking one day with bro, I think of Bass. He was with me. We're having a talk. And as we're talking, an angel released sound. I just told him, give me one minute. And I was chanting that sound. And the presence of God came there. He slept off. Before I will come back, I don't know the hours I spent there. I said, oh yeah, let's continue. I thought it was just two minutes. I'm sorry, I just have to apologize. But I leave from there. You must tell yourself, I'm from above. Jesus said, I'm from above. He was aware. Are you aware of where you are from? Are you aware? Look at this fresh word of God. Is he entering your spirit? Say, I'm from above. As we round up today, please, as you are leaving, let it be done on you. I'm from above. Condition your atmosphere. Condition your atmosphere. Don't have time for what does not profit your spirit. Don't have time for what does not edify. Condition your atmosphere. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. Yeah. 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 Ah. 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 Ah.
that were what? Nine. He brought you closer. Say, I'm in him. Say, Christ in me. The hope of all glory. Say, I live in God. So, I'm Robert asks you, your money or your life? I'm sorry. Bros, I know you cannot understand. My life? My life is where? In where? They said one herbalist in the village used to call people's name and they would wake up in the night and answer and die. They call your name. Where are you? How did he get the network that can enter into God? How did darkness find expression into God? Did you catch it? Power do what I've shared with you. Power it with prayer and fasting. Did you hear what I've said? Power it with prayer and fasting. After this meeting, collect the message. Go back and listen. Stay there. Rakatete lo mukutu kada vini nikaja ajale mene mene na ye. Power it. Listen. You notice know lost is battling you. Listen, listen. I said something now. You notice know lost is battling you. It's not because God does not love you. It's not because God does not love you. God still loves you. But you see, he, to be free from that thing, you will need to add fasting into your life. Your flesh is too strong. And it's telling you that it's stronger than you. Add six to six. You don't have to start from three days. Listen to me. Six to six that is consistent is powerful than three days. I'm talking to people. I'm talking to sons of God. If you know you are walking, listen, I've checked the spiritual realm. I can tell you there is another time that looks like six to six. I've checked it from the spirit realm. It's six to four. Four o'clock, the same effect of four is what happened at six. I studied it. So if you notice you are too hungry to break, break four. But don't stop it. Keep on adding it to yourself. You will just notice the hold of flesh will be dying. And the spirit will be finding expression. All of a sudden, the you that the world was looking like, like a weak believer, is becoming stronger. They just don't understand that. Hey! Did you catch it? Say, we are sons. Say, we are sons of God. See, it is not the same love that God has for the world he has for me. Mine is special. I am in the very heart of God. Hey! Are you ready? Let me show you. Acts 17, 28. I love how Paul put it. Now read verse 27 before we read verse 28 so that you will understand what Paul was saying. Amen. He said, He said that they should seek who? If aptly they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from what? Now he's telling them, listen, God is not far from every one of us. He was talking to a people there, but he said, but listen to me, for we, I'm not talking to everybody. Listen, God is not far from you. But for me, look at what he said. Paul knew this thing. Are you ready? Are you ready to live? Want to go? For in him I live and move and have my being. As certain also of our poet have said, for we are also what everybody. You see, offspring is the very child. I don't know about you. I know I'm a child of God. Listen, I told you already why our voices, why our voices are not powerful. It's because of too much of food. It's because we our atmosphere is not what. Condition two is one is what food two is what unconditioned atmosphere. When you to reduce the stronghold of food and you begin to add fasting to your life, those things will melt away. Those things not a problem. That prayer point you are praying, you will drop it because those things will melt away. The second one is what when you what condition your atmosphere intentionally. Put sounds around you. Put prayers around you. Put chants around you. Put everything around you. Now God, everything, now you is God. Amen. 
Now let's round up with Hebrew chapter 2. Oh, Jesus. Now, before we read Hebrew chapter 2, let's read Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Look at what Jesus, this is Jesus is talking. Look at the way Jesus described God. Oh, Matthew eleven twenty five. Are you writing? Are you jotting? He said, and at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee. Oh, what? Did he say, oh, God? Oh, what? Lord of what? That means Jesus was aware that God is the owner of what? Heaven and what? The earth. If you don't know this, nature will not listen to you. Everything that God created, both physical and spiritual, will not listen to you. Because you don't know the real owner. Are you ready? Say, I know the real owner of that company. Listen. Some of you are going coming here to share testimony next Sunday. Are you ready? This is what we are going to be using to pray. I know the real owner of money. I know the real owner of companies. I know the real owner of opportunities. Hey, the Bible says God of all what? Spirit. That means I know the real owner of men. Listen, can you hear me? If you know this, you can change the heart of now. Somebody wants to bless you. And after some time, they heard something about you. They changed their mind. Somebody about to experience a change now. After today's prayer, you are not talking to them. They, you don't have a problem. You know who owns them. And you are speaking from who owns them. So indirectly what? You what? Owns what? Them. Are you ready? Are you ready? Rise up on your feet. Somebody is not praying, you know. Begin to prophesy as sons. Prophesy as sons. Prophesy as sons. Oh. Somebody is not prophesying. I'm still waiting for you Cause heaven is waiting for you Jesus, they will pray. Why stand there? Look at these scriptures. Go to five. Go to verse five. You see, you see, I'm taking my time to teach so that you will grow. Listen, in this kind of ministry of the word of God, there are two dimensions of ministers. There is Apollo, there is Paul. The Bible said what? I Paul, what? I planted. Apollo, what? Water. These are the two ministries. The reason why many believers are not gaining stamina is because they were watered, but there was no seed. You don't water an ordinary ground and expect something. That is why we cannot remove the teaching ministry. That's why if you are not coming to learn, you know, for example, if I announce some minister of God that they are here, and some people will run there, they are coming to be what? Watered, and there is no seed. So you will look at the life of that believer and wonder that, ah, I used to see you anytime we invite this minister of God, all of them, you are around. But the person's life is fruitless. Why? There is no what? Seed. One day you will thank God for an atmosphere like Omega Vision. That you are privileged to have what? Seed and what? Water. Two things. Are you ready? He said, for unto the angels I did not put in subjection the word to come. Where of what? We speak. He's telling you that what? There is a word to come that we will not put. Continue. 
Oh Jesus, verse 6. He said, But one in a sense of pride tells his fly that what? What is man that thou art what? And the son of man that thou art. You see, they kept on testifying. Now let's jump to verse 10. Let's start from 10. I want to show you something and we'll round up. Oh Jesus, thank you. He said, For it became him on who all things, by whom all things, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. The next verse. Hey. Ah. He said, For both what? Everybody. And they who are what? All of them are what? All of them are what? He's telling you that what? You are not a child of Jesus. I share something that is big. You are not a child of what? <laughs> you are not a child of who? Come say, I'm a child of Jesus. So are you a Jesus baby? Yes, from a lesser light you are. But here he's saying what? We are what? We are what? Look at, he said, for which cause? Jesus is not ashamed to call them what? Brethren. That means Jesus look at me and call me brother. Listen. Listen. This is a powerful truth if you understand. Now, listen. This does not mean we don't reverence him as God. I will teach you one of those days how he became God because he stepped out of that, but he still called us what? Brother. That means anytime Jesus comes, he said, my brother Gabriel, are you surprised? He is Lord, but a dimension of him can humble himself and look at you as brother. Why is he calling you as brother? Because the very life of God is on the inside of you. Because everything that is in God is in you. When he sees you, he's not seeing himself. He's not seeing any other person. He's seeing what? Himself. Ah. Let's continue. This Bible is sweeting me. Is it sweeting you? Hey, are we understanding? Those of you at the back, are you getting it? The next verse. He says, saying, I will declare thy name unto my bread. In the midst of the church, I will sing thy praise unto thee. Verse 13, quickly. And again, I will put my trust in him and behold, I am what? The children with God as what? Give him. Let's go to verse 14, quickly. That's where we're going. Everybody, for as much as children are partakers of flesh and blood. Children are partakers of what? Children are partakers of what? Children are partakers of what? He's talking about the children of men. He said, he himself took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power over death. That is what? Let's go to the next verse. Oh. He said, and deliver them who through what? We are subject their lifetime to what? Bond. The Bible says Jesus delivered you from what? From what? The fear of death. That means somebody is saying, ah, you can die anytime. Oh. You better be afraid. He said what? He delivered you from what? That's why the Bible says, I can do all things. Through who? Christ. He said, the Lord has not given us the spirit of what? But of power, of love, and of a what? Listen, what did Anabali is using in what what did Anabali use in stressing threatening you? It is simple. It is fear of what? Fear of what? You will see the man will vibrate and he will say, I will kill you. It's called the fear of what? Death. The fear of what? The Bible said Jesus delivered us from the fear of death. Say, I know who I am. Are you ready? As sons, right now, you are going to call forth. You are going to declare. I am free from the fears. Amen. As I said that, I heard something in my spirit. Sickness is a fear of death. People that have sickness in their body, they are afraid of what? Dying one day. They are afraid that it will lead to death. I heard the Lord say, curse it. I curse every sickness in this place. I curse every form of sickness in this place. Every disease in this place is cursed. Say thank you, Jesus. Begin to give him glory. Thank him. Thank you for what you have learned. Thank you for what you have received. Amen. How many of you have been blessed today? How many of you regret coming to church? How many of you regret coming to church? Amen. These are things you will not hear every day. 
These are things you will not hear every day. This is why believers are not strong because they don't know the word of God. The Bible says, searching there, there you found what? Eternal life. How many of you have been blessed today? Once again, say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus.